Obviously, it's different with metal bats compared to wood bats, too. You know, there's sometimes yeah. where you can miss hit balls with a metal bat and get away with it as a hit, and when, in, when you're using a wood bat, you get sawed off, it breaks, that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. so we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm really not sure. I'm not I'm, I'm not trying to hit home runs. I'm not doing anything like that. And then other times when I do try to hit home runs, like today, I actually try to hit one out just because we, picks up, we picked up something from the catcher where he was he was setting up early, and me and uh, my, my two-hitter, actually, Mike Hurwitz, the little guy, noticed it, and I just was like, hey, Mike, you know, if he sets up in, can you just say my number while you're on the on the, on the, uh, on the on deck circle? So uh, he happened to, I happened to get into a plus count, and uh, he happened to come in, and Mike, you know, said, you know, here we go, 19, or whatever he said, and uh, so, uh, so I knew he was going to go fastball in because I, I don't really know any pitchers that throw any change-up or curveballs in. You don't really see that often. Mm-hmm. So uh, I kind of knew that was coming, and you know, got the front hip open a little early and got into one. So it's just one of those things where, where if I know what's coming, like today, you know, a catcher setting up earlier, the pitcher's giving pitches away, you know, then every now and then I'll try to yank one. But other than that, I'm just I'm just trying to hit the ball through the middle, just like and just like everybody's taught. And you know, if he comes in, pull it. If he goes away, hit it over second base, that type of thing. But um, you know, if, if the ball's gonna hit the barrel and jump, you know, I'm not gonna complain at all. Yeah, absolutely. That's really interesting that uh, that had happened today, getting a setup, getting uh, a little bit of a notice there. But yeah, I mean, you talked about it. Uh, not necessarily a huge power hitter, but the power numbers are very up this year, uh, mainly because situational hitting, like you said. So, um, I mean, you look at the power numbers now, 10 home runs. I mean, I, I don't see how you're not the number one shortstop in the country. So, I mean, it's got to be just a, a great feeling to kind of see that all come together. But more importantly, what have you seen from your team this season? I mean, obviously, uh, you guys have some stars in, in Justin and Jordan Power, uh, Justin seems to be the more, I guess, draftable guy this year, probably in the in the top few rounds of the season. I mean, what have you really learned from your teammates, I guess, in the past few years, but more this year uh, particularly? And, and what have you seen from Justin Parr that makes him such uh, an unbelievable all-around player? I mean, this guy's hitting, what, 30 straight games. Um, ha- have you picked up anything from how he's played? Um, and, and really, just how impressed have you been with, with these guys this year? Oh uh, yeah, I'm having a blast this year, absolutely. And we have a, a pretty veteran team in the field for the most part. I think we start, you know, three senior outfielders, a senior at third, junior, junior in the middle, and then a sophomore who had a couple hundred bets over the uh, the summer at first. And uh, this team's fun, you know. I get along with everybody. You know, we don't have that a few guys that are just kind of the guys nobody hangs out with. Everybody gets along. Everybody has fun. And uh, and um, on Justin's thing, you know, to watch him do what he's doing, what he's done this year is. Uh, it's actually it's been a blast. You know, this is kind of one of those things where he's the only guy in the country that's done what he's done. He broke the uh, the hit record today for you know I think it was 30 games before that. I think he hit hit safely today in his first at bat. Hit a line drive over short for 31 games straight, which is to me is like freakish. I can't believe it. And, oh, yeah. You know, the get the fact that that it was I think it's 52 maybe 56 games in the pros is is almost hard to fathom. I can't can't even put that together and make that sense. So. You know, watching him do what he does is awesome. He, he almost, I feel like every time he goes to hit, you almost expect him to get a hit, which is the wrong way to think. But it's like, what, what else am I supposed to think when he's on base? You know, yeah, at like almost a five, five fifty clip. It's kind of ridiculous. And and then Jordan, I really like watching him play too. You know, his BP rounds are fun to watch. It's like the home run derby. And I don't even try to field balls it short because usually they're hit too hard, and I'm trying to save my life going into the game, that type of thing. So. Yeah. So um, I've learned a lot from those two, though. You know, they're really good players. They've been around the game. You know, we're constantly talking, especially us three. And we are always talking baseball. We sit by each other on the bus, that type of thing. So we're always talking. We're always talking with Snyder, Harlow, that kind of thing. So, you know, those guys, I've learned a lot. And I'm sure they've learned a lot from me. And it's just fun to be around guys that know baseball and play like they do. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just one thing, too, uh, before we get into kind of any segments, uh, looking ahead for the Illinois team and even maybe potentially to the draft, uh, it should be uh, hopefully an exciting month in June for a lot of players, including Justin, of course, and, and, and yourself. But your dad, who actually, uh, you know, I go to Moline, you went to Moline a few years ago. Um, I met your dad a few days ago, and we just kind of talked because, uh, you know, the baseball talk type of thing, and, you know, I definitely wanted to get you on here, um, you know, because you're a Moline alum and I, and, and really, we've had a few guys in the past, you know, uh, Buckus and, and a few others really go out in, in the minor leagues and pitch, but we haven't had a position player uh, with so much athleticism come out, just absolutely dominate a position like you have at shortstop, and really made a name for yourself across the country, and now you have a chance to to be drafted. So uh, definitely an exciting time. And, and in a month or two, we're going to be talking about it and, and it'll definitely be back to Moline and, and it will be uh, good to see an alumni, another alumni be drafted. Now, so 
speaking of your dad, I mean, he he had to have been a mentor for you. Do you guys still every few days or or maybe even longer keep in contact as he texts you with uh, you know updates or just little things to to watch out for? Because I remember walking in there and he was watching the highlights of Illinois baseball. So I mean, he's got to be just as into it uh, watching you play, and he's got to have a blast with this. But what was it like to have him as a coach and then maybe even as a mentor with baseball for you? Uh, my dad is uh he's actually he's by far the closest person to me in my life through, you know, everything, ups, downs, girlfriends, you know, baseball, basketball, golf, anything you can think of. Me and my dad have talked, you know, bounced ideas, you know, anything anything you can think of, he's been there with me through. Uh he's that guy, you know, I can go through go, go to with anything. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, I'm comfortable talking to him through anything and he comes to a lot of games. He was here this weekend, watched all three, you know, we go out to dinner every night and, and obviously we we not stop talk about you know, baseball, he, he'll, he'll ask me, you know, how's school going? I just give him a simple, you know, good, bad, doing all right type of thing, and then it's, it's past that. That's about it. And then it's constantly baseball or how's Anthony doing, you know, the little brother going to play basketball at high point next year. So it's constantly about family, constantly about sports. That's just, you know, that's just the nature of the family. Mom's the same way. She's always calling, how'd you play today? Where'd you hit it? Did you hit it hard? Did, was it a cheap hit? Well, you know, that kind of thing. So, it's nonstop baseball talk, and to have a family that understands, you know, my life like they do and understands the game like they do is, is uh, kind of cool to me, you know, even from grandma or grandpa, they're all, you know, they think they're the coach. They're like, well, why did we do this? Why did we do that? We should have done this, that type of thing. So it's kind of cool to have a family, you know, obviously it follows me like they do, and uh, grandparents come to all the games, mom, dad. They, they, I can't imagine the amount of miles on their car and money they spent just to drive and watch me and my brother play baseball and basketball. It's, it's a... It's awesome to say the least. I can't put another word on that. So, you know, the family aspect is about as good as I can possibly imagine it being. Yeah, I mean that that sounds pretty unbelievable. Uh, that it's really just a baseball family oriented, and and that's really at the end of the day when you hear about some of these major leaguers, that's that's what it almost takes in a way. I mean, you really have to put a lot into baseball to be elite um, and, and to be the next Derek Jeter. Um, I mean, that's got to be some of your goals right there. It seems like that. Um, and reading that's your favorite athlete is Derek Jeter. I mean, you you've gotten some not comparisons to Derek Jeter yet, of course, but uh, I mean the smooth fielding that reminds me of a Robinson Cano. Always talking about the smooth fielding on him. Uh, really just making everything look very easy, and, and we've seen the offense come together. So uh, it's definitely going to be fun to watch. We all knew that you'd be a great player. It's just great to see um, you know, that translate into college play, Illinois really leading this team. Now, just looking ahead at the future, you guys are going to play Penn State at home. Penn State has not had a very good year to see the least. So going into this next series, what are your, what are your expectations? Are you, you, know, you have to expect a sweep, or is there any way to look at it? And at the end of the year, where do you see Illinois uh, you know, playing at? Are you guys going for that number one seed? Is that possible? You guys, it looks to be number three right now. Um, what does this last series versus Michigan State mean, and, and what, what do you see happening in this next series against Penn State? Um, you know, this series was tough for us. I thought we had the game one today, and uh, I happened to give up a home run in the, in the bottom of an eighth, bottom of the eighth with two outs to go down four three going into the ninth, and had seven eight nine coming up, and never got it back to the top. So, you know, this series was tough. Should have won. Should have won the. Uh, Should have won the series, especially against a really good Michigan State team. They, uh, I think, they have a chance to make a good run. They got, you know, they got big bats in the middle. They got good pitching. So we'll see. And um, upcoming, we got Penn State. Obviously, uh, they beat us. I think they might have won two out of three last year against us. Um, uh, they lost a bunch of guys, though. They had some some really, really good players in the middle of the lineup last year that they don't have this year. But, you know, we're always expecting a sweep, especially at home, especially against a team we know we're better than. And, and uh, I think it's almost a must sweep series because we go to Minnesota after that and they have one of the uh, one of maybe the top ten arms in the whole country going against us Friday. And then another guy on Saturday that's possibly draftable, you know, top two or three rounds. So to win – Three out of three this weekend could be really important, and um, it, I, you know, I don't know where I see us in the future right now because if we don't get into our own tournament, you got to be in the top six of the Big Ten, and, and right now we're a game away from that. So I, if we don't get into that top six, I don't think our chances of an at-large bid to make the field of 64 are very good. But uh, if we can find a way and you know win, you know, five out of the next six or six out of the next six games, well, we should get into that uh, that an at-large bid to the field of 64 and get into some tournament play. And I think if we get into t- uh, tournament play, get a little pressure on us. I think we'll respond and play really well. We just need some pressure. and uh, Under pressure, we've done really well this year, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like uh, you guys are very calm and collected overall. I mean, you guys have huge sound with Justin Parr and yourself overall. Very balanced lineup. Uh, that, that is unfortunate, though, looking at it now. Three runs in the eighth inning, that's always got to be uh, a tough kind of a heartbreaker there. But, again, the season is uh, – 
you got some time to go, and you're playing a team that hopefully you guys sweep should be able to beat. So uh, good luck with the upcoming series. I guess uh, just just anything you want to add on to. Well, I guess actually one more question regarding the draft. Just uh, I know it's really I guess it's not as early anymore. I was I would talk to draft prospects, some of the first rounder type of guys. Um, yeah, I believe it was like December, January, and at that point it was like six months away. So it was all speculation. Um, but now we're a month away. And, uh, I mean, are you noticing anything particularly? I'm sure there's tons of scouts at the games for you and Justin yourself. But uh, what are your expectations, I guess, for the draft, if you have any? I know it's hard to, to say really anything because you're in the middle of a very important season for Illinois and, and you, you really believe in that and, and you should, as you should. I mean, you're start shortstop for the team and you have to go as far as possible there. Uh, but is, is there any expectations regarding the draft or have you just kind of put that at the back of your mind and whatever happened, happens? Um, I, I've, I've done my best to put it at the back of my mind. Obviously, you know, it's an exciting time. You know, one of those things that just about every kid that wants to play college baseball dreams about. So I've done a, I've done about as good as I can to put it at the back, though, because, that, you know, the draft is almost out of my control unless I'm, you know, the only control I have over the draft is, is doing what I can every day, you know, making plays, making making the big play, getting the big hit, that kind of thing. You know, that's, that's the only thing I have in control. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the more plays I make, the better I swing it, the, the higher my draft projectability will be. So, so I'm just, you know, doing whatever I can to control what I can control. And, and if it happens to work out, it'll work out. If not, i got a fourth year here, and I can't complain. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you've had a fantastic year this year and would definitely make Illinois history if you play another year uh, for them. But, again, I mean, the opportunity, this could be the year for you. And in a month, we could be talking about uh, a Moline alumni going uh, in some, some higher rounds, 10th to 20th round potentially, maybe even more. I mean, with your recent play, it could be a, a surprising day, draft day, and maybe even – drafted by your favorite team I, I think it's a Cubs so I mean we'll see what happens um you know pretty soon you could be a shortstop in, in the major league so everything is looking up for you hopefully just uh keep at it keep up the grind try to be a lead as as you were talking about before good luck in the next series uh and hopefully in a month we're talking about you being drafted uh it would be an exciting team it's it's exciting time excuse me uh you know talking to minor leaguers that's usually kind of the highlight is draft day um uh, unless until you make the major leagues or, or make a debut or something like that but uh, you know draft Day is very special, so everything is looking up right now. Just enjoy uh, the rest of the season. Great having you on, Thomas. Uh, great to talk to a Moline alumni, um, and, and really, uh, hopefully, we'll talk again soon, possibly after the draft or something like that, or maybe after the season to kind of recollect. But uh, good luck, keep at it. Congrats on the home run today, and uh, look forward to see your name in the headlines uh, on draft day. Thanks for coming on, man. No problem. Thank you. All right, we'll let him go there. Enjoy the rest of his day. Ride the bus. Uh, Illinois, tough loss today, but great to have Thomas on here, uh, a star shortstop for Illinois there. So it was great to have him on. I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, this episode, it was pretty much just centered around that. So to really pass out, there's not much else to say. I mean, he's had a fantastic year. I mean, ridiculously good year for uh, Illinois. I mean, we all know that he had the athleticism, and it was just a matter of time, really. And, and now he got it done. So uh, it, it's great to see. I think he's making the Quad Cities very proud for Illinois, a uh, Big Ten school, uh, you know, just really holding up his own, uh, batting 300, making a name for himself, and hopefully the draft plays out in his favor. So I think it will. So we wish him the best of luck here at H4 TV and MLB Talk 101. My name is Jack McNeil. That was Thomas Lindauer, shortstop of University of Illinois. Thanks for coming on again, man. Hope you guys have a great day. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at the MLB Talk 101. Make sure to follow him on Twitter as well and uh, also on YouTube at the MLB Talk 101. Thanks, guys. Have a great, great day.